everybody says to me, what's it like to not be able to walk? That was a common question when I was a child. And for me, it's like, well, what's it like to be able to walk? I, I don't know what it's like to be able to walk any more than you know what it's like to not be able to walk. Surprise! For somebody with his disability, he does more in a day for himself than what most able-bodied people do. I hear people comment all the time that they hope that they can do what he can when they get to be that age. I keep do. I do. Happy birthday to you. I grew up in a very small town, um, which was hard because I was pretty much the only disabled child in the entire town. I have spina bifida. Um, and I also have um, some learning disabilities. How does living here make life easier? Um, I don't have to remember to do all the little things that seem like common sense, but when, but for me, because my disability got in the way so often. I would forget all the everyday things. If I have a problem, I can call the PCAs, they come, they help me, within five, ten minutes, I'm ready to go again. I'm into nonviolent act activism, um, speaking up against sexual assault, child abuse, um, any sort of domestic violence, anything like that. Um, I, um, I go to a lot of rallies, um, like they have Take Back the Night every year, I go to that. And um, Equal Right um, rallies, um, and I help there wherever I can. I come, I come here every day because I'm not satisfied with the way my TBI left me. TBI means traumatic brain injury. I hear another car head on on the freeway. My heart was uh, broken. I am disabled. It don't look it. At least I think it don't look it. But that's because of me coming here, working out hard. Okay. No memories, just a misery. Painting the picture of my enemies killing me in my sleep. Will I survive till the moment? Eight, nine, and ten. I got lucky. I one time I got lucky. I can't down on my, on my head. I think uh, I went on a snowmobile. There wasn't any snow. It was all ice. You're looking for an accident. That's what I got. Yeah, this place is a good, good place to live at. Because there's a lot of good health. It's, uh, it's above super individuals. Thank, thank God there's more than one. Wonderful person in this world. Sometimes I go to my parents' house. They visit the family because they didn't have one kid. They had ten. Ten kids. That's way too many. There's a picture of them. My brother and sisters. The line. It was pretty clear to me that Rachel was used to working around barriers to get things done. I learnt that first afternoon that achieving seemingly impossible goals is what she did on a regular basis. As her ski instructor in adaptive skiing, I had the privilege of seeing her move from being 
a student in a sit-down ski, a bi-ski, to skiing under her own balance. And it didn't stop at just skiing. Once in 1995, I went on a trip to Colorado. There, with the help of some friends, I was able to do some mountain hiking. I only regret that I don't get more opportunities to do things like that. Let's do it. Okay. You pedal as best you can, Rachel. Mm. We'll just have a good time. Mm. I'll turn your music up a bit. Over the past four days, Rachel, who suffers from cerebral palsy, successfully pedaled 300 miles from Minneapolis, Minnesota to Madison, Wisconsin. Without many opportunities to experience adventures, she had embraced every mile of the journey. It's funny because my whole life, my whole, everybody has always told me to talk about my abilities, you know? So I, I always focus on what the positive and what I can do. And so when people ask me about my disabilities, I'm kind of like, <gasps> When I was younger, people would ask my family, what does she want? And now they ask me, what do you want? And that makes my life a lot easier because as a person with a disability, it's very easy to let other people take over. And I have always been my own person, very much so. And so I was worried about that, but I'm still my own person. The, the thing about living here for me is it lets me be my own person. 